Hello everyone and welcome to the course on simulating fluid flows using python. I hope you are not too angry with the kind of delay that we have here for this lecture, but I was out there traveling with my family, of course with the necessary precautions given the corona period. So we are back with our discussion on convection diffusion problems. So far we have almost looked at the one dimensional variant of the convection diffusion equation. We had looked at uh, three or four different kind of schemes that is the central differencing, the upwind and quick schemes and we saw that uh, some schemes have some advantages and disadvantages accordingly. So now we want to take this discussion a little bit further and we are going to implement the multi-directional problems. So today in the lecture we are going to talk about the two dimensional convection diffusion phenomena. So first of all I will introduce you to the two dimensional system as to what is the governing equation and how we are going to go about it. Towards the end of this lecture we will talk about a simple problem that we are going to look from a coding perspective as to how we are going to actually solve this two dimensional system using CFD and uh, the important part for the lecture today would be the finite volume discretization. So we are going to take the example of central differencing scheme. Uh, this would be to illustrate as to how we can use various different kind of schemes. But you would see that if you have the understanding of what we did in two dimensional diffusion and what we did in 1D convection diffusion problem. So this lecture is sort of going to be a mix of those two aspects. So we are going to take advantage of the knowledge that we gained in understanding the 2D phenomena when we talked about the pure diffusion and we are going to plug in the convection part in there and we are going to see how to handle that. So this lecture is going to be very interesting. If you have any questions feel free to write them down in the comments but without wasting any further time let us get started. So before jumping into the discretization and the finite volume aspects, let me give you an introduction of how we write the governing equation that governs the convection diffusion phenomena in two dimensional system. So we are going to take the example of a steady scenario without the sources and the sink term. So just to give you an overview, if we have an unsteady system, we would have a time derivative in our equations. And if we have a source or a sink, then we would have something that we refer to as in capital S on the right hand side. We have already looked at the source sink uh, in one of the previous lectures. So if you want to understand how to discretize the source and the sink terms, you can refer to that. But regarding the unsteady part that we would be doing it later on. So talking about the convection diffusion problem, you remember the one dimensional version is given in this particular form here, where the left hand side, the term on the left hand side, it mathematically denotes the rate of convection that is d by dx of rho u phi where u is the one dimensional x velocity and phi could be any variable of our interest it could be a scalar or it could be a vector component. On the right hand side we have the diffusive term where the gamma is the diffusivity or some diffusion coefficient and again the phi is the variable that we are interested in. Now when we want to talk about in 2D so it is obvious that the velocity vector it would have two different components and we are going to call that as u that is in the x direction and v that is in the vertical direction and this is a very common nomenclature or the terminology that is used in the fluid mechanics group and we are going to stick to that. So in the two dimensional version we have the convection term as it is from the 1D system and we also have an extra term because of the two dimensionality and that is written as d over dy that is dv dy of rho into v into phi. So the vertical velocity is taken into consideration over here and similarly the diffusion is happening now in both x and the y direction. So just to recapitulate the convection determines the transport of this variable phi due to the fluid motion and it is sometime interchangeably called as an advection in some of the textbooks. And as we can see that the convection term, the term in red, it is strongly dependent on the fluid velocity because we have u and v in the system. So this should be u and v both because we have a two dimensional system here. On the other hand, diffusion 
determines the transport of phi due to diffusive phenomena. So diffusion usually happens whenever there is a gradient in the fluid property. So suppose if the temperature has some high value here and some low value here, we know that the temperature or the heat, it would flow from one end to the other because of the molecular diffusion. And that also happens when we talk of fluid mechanics that the momentum diffusivity might happen because at some places there could be a high momentum and the kinematic viscosity or the dynamic viscosity of the fluid would help in uh, transporting of that momentum from the high momentum to the low momentum zones. And uh, that is why uh, the diffusion is said to be directionally less choosy because it persists, it could persist in all direction and it only depends on the gradients of the fluid property. So that is about the governing equations and now we have looked at the governing equations and we understand the principles of the finite volume method. So let us see how the principles would apply to that. So before jumping into that, just want to recapitulate the two dimensional grid that we have been using in these kind of problems. So suppose this solid boundary over here in blue that represents my physical domain or the physical boundary. And when we discretize it using the finite volume approach, we place some grid points all over the boundary. So here these red points, they are called as the boundary points and these blue points, they are called as the interior points. And for any point, we can have some finite volume around that. And typically the finite volume intersects at half the distance, but it needs not to be the case. So for any particular point of interest P, we could have an east node, a west node, north node and a south node. And correspondingly, we can determine or we can define an east phase, west phase, north phase and the south phase of the control volume. So this is just to revisit what kind of grid systems we are going to stick with. And I hope that this wouldn't come out as a surprise to you because we have already looked at this in a very greater detail when we talked about the 2D diffusion scenario. So now, uh, let me just zoom it up a little bit. So we have the point of interest P and we have all the points around it as discussed on the last slide. Now we want to do the finite volume based analysis on our governing equation. So the first step, if you remember, was to integrate the governing equation over the finite volume. So what I've done is I've simply integrated both the left hand side and the right hand side over here. So I've taken a volume integral here of the entire equation. And the second step, which if you remember is, we use the Gauss divergence theorem to convert these volume integral to the surface integral. So when we do that, we get a normal vector here. So we get the normal vector times rho u phi into dA. So the volume integral gets converted to the area integral. And remember that this normal vector is the outward normal to the appropriately chosen plane. So for example, when we are going to do this x, the derivative in x direction, we are going to look at this particular plane here and this particular plane here. And then the corresponding normal vector, it would be minus i cap here and it would be plus i cap here. And similarly, when we would talk about this vertical term, uh, this uh, second integral that is result of this vertical derivative term, the corresponding normal vector would point to cap uh, plus j cap on the north face and minus j cap on the south face. And similarly for the diffusion terms. So after we do this analysis, it is easy to see that once you take this plus and minus on these faces, we see that we would get something of this particular form here. So allow me to explain here. So we get rho u phi multiplied by a when the area is integrated over this entire phase and the whole quantity is evaluated at the east phase minus, minus is as a result of this minus i cap rho u phi a evaluated on the west phase. And similarly, we get rho v phi a that is the vertical velocity evaluated at the north phase minus the same quantity evaluated at the south phase. And remember this minus is due to the fact that this is pointing in the negative y direction. And we have already looked at the right hand side during the discussion on the 2D diffusion process. So until this point, we haven't really made any kind of assumptions, but 
you know that in order to proceed from this point onwards we would have to use certain approximations for the phi variable and we would see that if we use some kind of assumptions we get some kind of scheme so today we are going to focus on the central differencing scheme so in the central differencing scheme we take our original equation so i've just uh, put some colors here to uh, segregate the terms that you get from the x derivatives and the black terms are the y derivative terms so if you remember when we were talking about the convection diffusion problem in 1d we say that central differencing is equivalent to taking the piecewise linear approximation so wherever i want to define a phase value i would simply average the corresponding neighboring nodes so for example if i want to calculate this phi at small e so the phi at small e is over here i can calculate phi at capital p plus phi at capital e and just divide it by 2 or take their average so that is how we can simplify from here to here and i have also taken one further assumption that the area of the cross section that remains the same so all these area they get cancelled out and we get phi e represented at this average phi w represented as this average and similarly phi n as this phi s as this and we have already seen how to handle the gradient terms if we have a piecewise linear kind of system here so i hope that this would be all all right so far if you don't understand any point please pause it here and refer to the section where you are facing problems if you still cannot figure out please drop them down in the comment and i'll try to answer your query as well so now we have gotten this equation that looks vaguely familiar and this is actually true that we have already come towards the end of this discussion but before going into the final output let us look at a simplified version and the reason why i am looking at the simplified version is so that we can get a simplified equation so when i am saying a simplified version i am talking about the case where the u and v that is the component of velocity in x and y direction they have the same magnitude and all these grid spacings and uh, the density they are not a function of space or time so when we do that we can write this rho u as the convection strength that we have denoted as capital f and we can write this gamma over h that is the diffusion coefficient divided by the grid spacing as capital d so when we write in this particular fashion we have a little bit more simplified equation and this form here where f and d are the same symbols that we had used in the one dimensional system this is not a necessary step you can choose to skip over this and you can write a more general expression but i'm trying to make things a little bit easier on you because this is a new topic and i don't want to give a more generalized expression which could have a little bit more number of terms and a little bit more variation of the terms so we are going to stick to the simplified version for now and now the important bit is we have phi p we have phi n we have phi s we have phi e and phi w so obviously this equation can be arranged in a general form of ap phi p equals to summation of a neighbors into phi neighbors where the neighbors are these east west north and south points and if you would rearrange this equation you can find or you can cross check that these coefficients a i is they are given in this particular form here so this is how we actually solve the convection diffusion problem that has a two dimensional nature using the finite volume approach and this last equation mind you it's a simplified version so in case if you are given a problem where the grid is non uniform where the finite volumes are all over the place and as well the uh, velocity magnitudes they might not be equal to each other then you have to go back to the start you have to go back to the main equation integrate them and try to obtain a generalized version and the process would be entirely the same you may not get uh, these nice coefficients very accurately or in the sense that they may not look exactly similar to each other but you would see that the general expression that is ap phi p equals to a neighbors into phi neighbors that would still be true so this is the part of the theoretical discussion let me give you an overview of what problem we are going to solve using this knowledge in the next lecture so the problem that we are going to discuss is basically the same problem that we looked at during the 2d diffusion phenomena so in the 2d diffusion system we took this square domain with a uniform density and we said that the 
three different walls they are maintained at a temperature of 0 whereas the top wall was maintained at a temperature of 1. So, until this point this is exactly what we did in the 2D diffusion scenario. Now, we want to add the convection part onto that and to do that I imposed a constant flow field which has a magnitude of 1 meter per second velocity in the x and also in the y direction. So, basically I am just trying to stick to this simplified version where my density is some constant where my u is equal to v and also the diffusivity is constant and I will choose a grid such that the grid spacing is the same in all direction. So, we are going to solve this particular problem using the uh, using the understanding that we gained through this lecture, but that we would look through a python code in the next lecture. So, in the meantime you can try to write or you can try to modify your existing python script that was uh, that we created for the two dimensional system and there would be actually very minute changes you just have to modify those uh, coefficients to incorporate the f that is the convection strength. So, I hope that uh, you would at least give it a try and in the next lecture which would be released much shortly we would look at the solution of this uh, problem through the finite volume methods. In case if you have any questions please feel free to write them down in the comments. If you hit the uh, if you like this video please hit that like button and I would be really appreciated for that. Until the next lecture please stay safe and take care I will see you in the next one bye bye.